I had to go live alone in another state to attend college. I was lucky, my father helped me pay for the expenses of a house so I could focus on my studies. The house was wonderful, at least to me. It was a small house that consisted of a bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, living room, and my favorite part, a huge backyard where I liked to, to sit at night drinking tea while listening to an audiobook or some music to relax. But very strange things were happening, not in my house, but in the neighbor's house. It started on the first night I stayed there, around 10 o'clock at night. I heard a scream of a girl from the neighbor's house. More than scaring me, I found it amusing. It wasn't a scream of pain or fear, just a girl screaming. So I imagined a girl throwing a tantrum or fighting with someone, but the scream happened every night without fail. I asked the other neighbors if they knew what it was about, but I always got different answers. Some believed it was a sound of the gate closing that sounded like a scream. Others thought the house was haunted. One of the neighbors told me that she had even called the police, worried about what might be happening to the girl. But the police, upon searching the house, saw that only a man in his 40s lived alone there. I learned to live with these screams. Supernatural or inexplainable things didn't scare me after all. I had never experienced anything like it. Beside that, it was about six very quiet months studying, listening to one or the the other of those screams, but other than that, everything was normal. Things changed when I went on vacation. I didn't want to spend the holidays at my father's house, since I had to do some things in my own house, mow the lawn, buy some furniture, things that people who live alone do. However, with the holidays came boredom. The city where I lived was small, it didn't have a mall or any activities to do, so I started to obsess over the scream from the neighboring house. I began to observe the neighbor's routine, to see what time he left and returned. I noticed that every day he left at sunset and only came back at dawn. I attributed this to some night job he might have, so I started to prepare my plan. I bought a tall ladder to jump over the wall and a mini scythe to defend myself in case the neighbor came back and turned out to be dangerous. I was also prepared in case the police showed up, I was going to say it was because of the screams I heard and I wanted to see if everything was okay, but I wasn't too worried. I had a good lawyer and I would enter and leave without anyone noticing. Then the awaited night arrived. The man left his house at the same time, got into his car, and drove away. I waited about 30 minutes to make sure he wouldn't come back because he had forgotten something and I grabbed the scythe and the ladder. I put the ladder on the wall, climbed it holding the scythe, sat on the wall, balanced the scythe on the wall, and passed the ladder to the other side so that I would climb it when I returned. The house was very well reinforced. In addition to the high walls, bars on all windows made me wonder how the hell I was going to get into the house since I didn't have any skill in picking locks. However, to my surprise, the front door was unlocked. Who would be so stupid to have so much security and leave the door unlocked? I sarcastically asked as I entered the living room. The house was normal, furnished, but it seemed abandoned. Everything was covered in dust as if no one who lived here used anything. I started walking through the house, everything was extremely quiet, a tranquility that gave me chills until it happened. The strange scream that happened every night made me alert, in fight or flight mode. I held the scythe tightly and headed to where the scream had come from. I went to the kitchen where I saw there was a door to a basement. I tried to turn on the lights but they didn't work, so I turned on the flashlight on my cell phone. Trying to relieve the fear I was feeling, I tried to make jokes in my head as if I were some special agent entering an investigation. As I descended, I realized that the basement was clean. It was the only part of the house without any dust. It was very strange for him to clean the basement and leave the rest of the house in that state. There was a sofa, a freezer, and a stove. But that's when it happened. I heard a strange noise coming from the ceiling. As I raised the flashlight, there she was. A girl of at least 10 years old holding onto the corner of the ceiling in a completely inhuman position. Her eyes were as black as darkness, reflecting the flashlight with an unnatural glow. Her body was twisted in an impossible way, 
as if all her bones had been broken and reassembled incorrectly. She had a macabre smile, a smile that seemed more like a slit open in the darkness of her face. I froze. She moved slowly, descending the wall like a spider. Every movement made a horrible sound, like bones breaking and rearranging. Her gaze fixed on me, a gaze that pierced my soul with terrifying intensity. My muscles tensed, my heart pounded uncontrollably in my chest. Suddenly, the girl let out a sharp and inhuman scream and started running towards me at a frightening speed. I dropped the scythe and ran for the ladder, but she was faster. I felt her presence right behind me. I felt her cold and fetid breath on my neck. I ran through the living room trying to find the exit, but she caught up with me, jumping on top of me and knocking me down. She started scratching and biting me with tremendous force, her mouth opening in an impossible way as if she were going to swallow my whole head. I screamed and fought to free myself, but she was relentless. Her nails sank into my flesh, her bites tore my skin. Desperation took over. I thought I was going to die there, devoured by that horrible creature. That's when the front door burst open with a bang. The neighbor rushed in and yelled at the girl to stop. She stopped suddenly, still on top of me, and looked at him with a confused expression. He said calmly, Sweetheart, please let him go. He didn't mean to disturb you, and even if he entered uninvited, he didn't mean to harm you. The girl looked at me with completely dark eyes, as if she had no soul. The neighbor said again, Come on, go down to your room. I'll take the boy back to his house and come back to prepare something for you to eat. The girl got off me and started to retreat to the basement without taking her eyes off both of us. The man helped me and took me out of the house, taking me back to mine. When we got to my house, he slapped me in the face and asked, What the hell were you doing in my house? Were you trying to steal something? No, I said, it, it's still extremely nervous. I was trying to figure out what was causing the screams every night, but I was worried that something might be happening to that girl. But what the hell was that thing? What did you do to her? My neighbor sat on the couch and sighed. I don't know who she is, he said, lighting a cigarette. Usually I would be very bothered by someone smoking in my house, but I was afraid to stop him. He seemed to really need that cigarette. I own several properties. I survived by renting all of them out. When I came to inspect this one next door, I found that girl in the basement. She tried to attack me, biting and scratching like she did with you. But then she stopped and sniffed me like a dog trying to recognize its mother. She stopped and climbed back to the corner of the wall. Scared, I left the house and called the police, but she was no longer there, thanks to her ability to move in unnatural ways. She hides from others she finds dangerous, so I left the basement ready for her. Every day I come to be with her and give her meat. She only feeds on raw meat and spends the whole day stalking me. How did you find me? I asked. I forgot to lock the door, but the house has a silent alarm. I knew you had entered as soon as the door opened. Is there a chance that thing will come after me? I asked, frightened. I don't believe so. She usually never leaves the house, never followed me wherever I go, only follows me if I don't come back the next day. The man finished smoking a cigarette and prepared to leave. I'll let it pass this time, but don't ever enter my house again, he said, heading for that exit. And don't try to waste your time telling others what you saw. No one will believe you. I've tried. Since then, I try to spend as much time as possible away from that house. I can't leave because of the contract and my father isn't that rich, so I stay at my college friends' houses and spend the holidays at my father's house. I never again doubted the strange things that happen in the world. The memory of that horrible creature still haunts me, and I can hardly believe I survived that terrifying encounter. Now, whenever I hear a strange noise at night, I cower in fear, wondering if she's nearby, waiting to devour me. But despite everything, one thing is certain. I will never dare to enter that neighbor's house again. That place is full of dark secrets and unimaginable horrors, and I don't want to risk becoming another victim of that terrible creature.